Okay, so um, I want to first um, uh, to thank the Institute for the Study of Markets and Ethics for asking me uh, to participate in this uh, in this conference. Um, in large part because uh, this is a paper that I've always been thinking about writing, but it's not uh, a, a typical paper for someone like me. I teach uh, business law at uh, Stanford, uh, and my areas of focus are, are uh, banking regulation, uh, bankruptcy, uh, uh, contracts, uh, contract theory. Um, and so, uh, and I also teach, uh, by the way, a course in uh, venture capital with a focus on China. It's a comparative venture capital uh, with a focus on China that I've, uh, that I've uh, also taught in uh, other places around the world. Uh, and this paper grows out of uh, some observations I've gotten from uh, living and uh, uh, teaching in China over the last uh, 10 years. So I spend about uh, two weeks a year uh, in China um, uh, teaching uh, uh, banking regulation, uh, bankruptcy law, and venture capital. Uh, and um, I want to uh, address some observations uh, and, you know, in keeping in, in, in line with Andrew's theme, I've, I've posed, actually posed the, the, the topic of my paper as a question to highlight my ignorance about, um, about uh, the issues that I'm addressing here. And the question is, does too much fa mean less li? Uh, and I pose it in terms of uh, Confucian political theory. Uh, so, um, um, Mainland China today is characterized by what uh, any casual observer would uh, define as a culture of incivility. Uh, most Westerners come uh, uh, into contact with this incivility through what they call um, bad behavior by Chinese tourists. Uh, but if you travel to China, you'll re recognize that the behavior isn't reserved for foreign travel. Um, the bad behavior is Characteristic and it's replete throughout um, throughout uh, uh, China. Um, uh, you know, as the Chinese um, econ economy matures and develops, a lot of observers uh, have uh, expressed a belief that this is going to go away. That this will be displaced by what uh, Deirdre McCloskey refers to as the bourgeois virtues. That in a in a um, uh, an economy that is characterized by um, robust capitalism, people behave better and treat each other better in order to um, uh, take on the advantages of capitalism. But it hasn't in China so far. When, uh, when China has uh, uh, has uh, developed uh, far beyond um, uh, uh, many other um, uh, economies. So the question I want to pose is whether the culture of bad behavior that we witness across mainland China is a product of an overemphasis on formal legal rules as the mechanism for social order. In other words, is the insistence that uh, society be controlled by legal rules rather than ethical norms, uh, is, is that emphasis on uh, legal rules uh, causing a reduction in uh, ethical uh, behavior and, and keeping with Andrew's um, theme of ignorance, I, I have the very cautious answer of, of maybe. Uh, so, um, so what I want to do is uh, three things. I want to examine what's meant by a culture of bad behavior in mainland China. Uh, I also want to show um, that the balance uh, and the roles uh, that formal legal rules and ethical norms have played in, Ch uh, in Chinese legal history. Uh, it has a tradition uh, in the Chinese mindset. And I also, I also want to offer contemporary examples, if there's time, of uh, the current imbalance in, um, in uh, Chinese business law uh, as I experience it. So, um, I take lots of pictures. I like uh, taking pictures when I'm in uh, China. Um, I, just, I was walking down the street. This is in Shenzhen. I was walking down the street, and I saw a car parked this way. And this is hmm. this is not uh, atypical for for China. I mean, if we walk down the street in, a, in an American city and see a car parked this way, we would um, we would expect that the police would come and 
you know, the ticket, there's never, this, tic, this car will never be ticketed in China. Um, this, this person knows that the police have, uh, have uh, they have to police millions of people. They can't bother with parking like this. Um, this is another street uh, in Shenzhen. And I want you to notice that um, there are cars parked on the yellow strip in the middle <laughs> of the street. I also want you to notice that on the right, I'm sorry, on the left here, there are parking spaces available. Um, people will um, park wherever they choose because the consequences, um, are, the legal consequences, just aren't there. Um, and it, it's, it, it's irrelevant to them whether uh, anyone will be harmed by it. Uh, this is a, a, a photograph I took of a, a car accident um, that occurred uh, also in Shenzhen. A um, couple things I want you to notice about this uh, uh, photograph. Number one, you have cars moving on the same lane in opposite directions. All right, there's a car parked on the far right side, uh, and uh, this is one of the cars involved in the accident. Um, and um, they drive in the, on the, uh, in the same manner that Americans do, right? Um, you drive on the right side of the road, the opposite traffic comes on the left. But notice the cars in the accident were, the, the drivers, I, I took this photograph because they were yelling at each other for driving in the wrong lane, but both of them were driving in the <laughs> wrong lane. The other thing I want you to notice about this is that it's very typical for Chinese streets, particularly in, in, uh, in busy cities, uh, or in, on busy streets to have these iron fences along the sidewalks. And the purpose of these fences is to prevent pedestrians from crossing the street anywhere they want. In other words, you can tell people that it's dangerous to cross the street, but at some point you recognize they're not going to listen to you. And so you have to erect these fences, in, uh, and, and, which open up at the street corners and crosswalks uh, for, the, for the people to uh, okay, this is a, a photograph uh, at Seoul, um, uh, Incheon Airport, and the reason why I, I, I took this uh, just after having received an email from John Hasness, um, and I was uh, departing Seoul, and I was departing Seoul on a Friday, which I, I try to avoid, because Friday is a very popular day for Chinese tourists to shop in Seoul, so the airports are always crowded. The streets are always crowded with Chinese tourists trying to buy duty-free goods to take back to, uh, uh, um, to, to the mainland. Uh, the reason why I took this photograph is because uh, I, had, uh, I was uh, um, uh, getting off a train uh, that was transporting us um, from a Korean airplane, and there was another Chinese airplane that had just arrived. And the Chinese uh, tourists uh, uh, boarded the, uh, the train at one end, and the Korean tourists boarded at the other. And if you'll notice, you can tell, or anyone who's, who's been to Korea or China enough can tell where the Chinese tourists are and where the Korean uh, passengers are. The Korean passengers are on the right, because in Korea, the norm is that if you are standing on an escalator, you stand to the right, and you allow those who want to walk up the escalator to walk on the left. That is a, a, a social norm in Korea that if you violate it, whether you are a tourist or not, whether you're a Westerner or a Korean or not, if you violate it, you will, you will be notified immediately by uh, uh, others around. On the left, there's pushing and shoving going up the escalator. Um, those are the, the Chinese tourists. And I, what, I, what I thought, well, I took this photograph because I thought this is a great contrast of, uh, of two cultures, both uh, emerging from poverty. Korea was one of the uh, poorest countries in the world 30 or 40 years ago. And yet, the Koreans have always uh, adhered to these uh, social, ethical norms uh, of uh, public behavior that escapes uh, in China. And so, um, uh, what I thought was uh, maybe the way the Chinese approach law is, uh, is causing this breakdown in uh, social order. So we get our understanding of Chinese law, and I apologize to those of you who are, who are, who are much more um, uh, conversant in Confucian um, uh, political theory than, than I am. Um, uh, so we get our, our understanding of Chinese law from a translation of Montesquieu's Spirit of the Laws uh, 
uh, from a, scholar, a Chinese scholar by the name of Yan Fu in 1913. And he explains to us that what we use as the term law in, in Western society actually uh, can be broken down into four different possibilities. Li, which can mean order, or rights, of, or rules of propriety, which is what I'm talking about when I talk about Li. Uh, and fa, which are human-made positive laws, uh, as well as uh, shi, which is um, uh, control. It can also mean qing, which uh, tends to be reserved for uh, penal laws, criminal laws and criminal punishment. So when uh, Confucius uh, talks about social order, he talks in terms of li and fa. And with respect to li, he, think, he, he expresses li in terms of what we would call a natural law concept where people are basically uh, good uh, and ideally what you want is for people to control themselves and behave well um, with respect to others. Individuals will do what's right if they know what is right and um, we should very sparingly use uh, enforced social sanctions um, to uh, get good behavior. Fa, on the other hand, is a positive law concept it should be used in Confucian terms as a deterrent, and it only operates when people ignore Li, when people um, uh, ignore uh, doing the right thing and insist upon doing the wrong thing. Uh, and Fa operates by, uh, by having the commander tell the commanded what to do, and it is enforced by coercive force, by the force of arms, by the force of the state. So in Confucian, the Confucian approach to law um, permeates the Chinese mindset on law, and uh, the idea is that um, uh, the focus should be on Li, on um, moral conduct. Uh, and if leaders engage in moral conduct, Confucius says, others will follow their uh, example, and they will develop this internal self-control uh, by uh, conscience, and the use of Fa should be limited. All right? I don't want to go into too much of the Chinese legal history that I uh, give in the, the paper, but I do want to focus on Mao Zedong. Uh, Mao Zedong, um, with, the, uh, with the Communist uh, uh, Revolution um, uh, in 1949, um, uh, imposes uh, a new legal order on the Chinese, uh, wants to reject the Western uh, um, uh, Adoption, uh, 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 the, the adoption of Western law and legal rules that the, that the uh, Republicans had imposed on China up until then. And he particularly attacks Confucian uh, notions of uh, law and says that uh, those who, who adopt Confucius, uh, Confucius's approach ought to be eradicated, that they are uh, agents of imperialism. Uh, and so he has a, 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 an attack on um, on, uh, on the approach uh, that employed Li as a, as, a, as a constraint on behavior. He saw Li as uh, constraints on re-education and control of the people, and he also saw manners, good manners and ethical behavior as a tool of oppression. That you want to use these things in order to, to that the uh, upper classes use these things, uh, manners, to uh, keep uh, people down. In fact, he praised people who had Rude, uh, who engaged in rude or uh, mannerless uh, uh, behavior. Uh, and he had a strong belief in formal law as the way to enforce things. Now, what we have today is, uh, is largely erected by one of um, Mao's enemies um, uh, and successor, Deng Xiaoping, who created a new legal order uh, after Mao's uh, 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 death. But that legal order is what we would call um, Chinese legalism, or, or legalist. Uh, the legalists believe that uh, the way you order society is through extensive and, and uh, um, uh, 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 intrusive uh, uh, legal rules that permeate all aspects of society. Uh, and today you can see it in, in terms of uh, uh, how, the legalist, uh, how the legalist order tells people where they live, how many children they can have, uh, and, and, um, and so on. Now, there's an uh, emphasis today um, by um, Xi Jinping on, um, on the rule of law. And uh, the rule of law uh, is, is thought to be um, something that needs to be reinforced in order to attract uh, uh, foreign uh, investment. Um, but uh, um, 
Uh, part of the problem is that uh, uh, much of what the, the uh, uh, Xi Jinping's um, effort is, uh, is uh, designed to do is um, uh, undermined by the fact that um, there's this uh, belief that unless there's a rule against it, um, we're allowed to do it. And, uh, and so unethical behavior and corruption are, um, uh, um, uh, ext uh, are, are extens uh, extensive throughout uh, uh, Chinese uh, business law. And I give examples in the paper of um, the lack of uh, trust and the lack of um, um, belief in the uh, court system that uh, uh, characterizes uh, investors uh, uh, in uh, China, both domestic investment and uh, foreign investment. Uh, the part of the paper that is undeveloped, the very end uh, part, is where I try to give some business examples of, um, of the uh, imbalance between Li and Fa. And I, I start with uh, securities regulation. Oops, and it's um, out of time. Um, so I can, I can give uh, uh, more examples of, of this stuff. Oh, I just wanted to say one. Last thing about, um, so there's this belief that prosperity is going to bring manners to China, that prosperity brings a better future for everything in China. This is a photograph of my departure from uh, Beijing on the very last day that I was uh, there. Uh, and this is, um, this is a, a clear day elsewhere in China, but um, in Beijing, uh, you can see that you can't even see the runway uh, because of uh, the smog, and uh, there's a possibility that uh, progress won't uh, solve um, this problem. So, that's okay. <laughs> thank you very much.